On July 30, 1944, after securing the beachhead, and a critical high ground above it, and after the annihilation of large numbers of Japanese, following their failed counterattack, the troops of the 3rd Amphibious Corps, reached the turning point, of the Battle of Guam. On the same day, the battered remnants of the Japanese garrison, under a new commander, General Hideyoshi Obata, began organized withdrawal north, across the low ground of the island's isthmus, to a new defensive line, prepared midway across the island, beginning east of Tuman Bay, running southeast to Beragada village, and the slopes of 206 meters high, Mount Beragada. Under his command, Obata still had about one quarter of the estimated pre-invasion garrison strength, along with two intact tank companies organized into the two provisional units, known as the left and right sector units. For the Japanese, victory was no longer, a remote possibility. The only thing they could do, was inflict as much damage as possible on the attacker, and fight until the bitter end. Meanwhile, instead of a hasty pursuit, General Geiger, used the day to rest and reorganize his battle-weary troops, of the 3rd Amphibious Corps, before launching a full-scale attack to the north. For the final push north, Geiger divided the island down the middle, ordering the 3rd Marine Division, to take the left flank, while the 77th Infantry Division, took the position on the right. Moreover, to ensure the core rear area, would be secure before the advance north, he sent several reconnaissance patrols into southern Guam, to verify there were no significant Japanese forces in the area. These patrols, found many Gumanians everywhere, some in camps established by the Japanese, and others on their farms, and even though, fighting and relentless bombardment, mainly destroyed their homes, the local population remained friendly to Americans, and hostile to the Japanese. At the same time, Americans found only scattered, small groups of Japanese, often only single soldiers, as it became evident, that the remaining combat units on the island, were in the north, not the south. In the morning hours of July 31st, the 3rd Amphibious Corps, resumed the attack. The Marines of the 3rd Marine Division, advanced against little resistance along the island's west coast. The 3rd Battalion, of the 3rd Marines, entered the ruins of Agonia. Marines moved carefully through the ruined town, fighting a few scattered snipers and stragglers, clearing house by house, and by noon, Agonia was again in American hands. The rest of the division, advanced well beyond the line set for the day, reaching the critical Agonia Pango Road, one of the few that connected the eastern and western sides of the island, encountering only rear guards, of the retreating Japanese forces. Securing a hard surface to Gonya Pango Road, would prove critical in winning the Battle of Guam. After having to move almost 16 kilometers, to reach their position on the right flank, on July 31st, the 77th Division moved out on schedule, just after daylight, with the 307th Regiment up front, followed by the 305th, moving along the east coast. As in the 3rd Division sector, the Japanese resistance facing the army advance, was negligible, and within two hours, both regiments had reached their objective set for the day. While they advanced, the 307th Regiment rescued 2,000 Gumanians, from the abandoned Japanese detention camp. In the meantime, the 77th Reconnaissance Troop, screened the division's exposed southern flank and supply routes, while after securing Orop Peninsula, the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade and 306th Regiment, took over responsibility for protecting the landing zone, and patrolled the island's southern portion. For the 77th Division, resupply presented a bigger problem than Japanese resistance. The supply dumps were 27 kilometers to the rear, and there were no roads crossing the island west to east, to serve as a supply route. To resolve this, engineers began building the road across the island. However, it was a time-consuming process, impossible to complete on time. Therefore, the capture of the cross-island Agonia Pango Road, proved to be a crucial factor in solving the 77th Division's logistical problems. 
The following day, on August 1, the 3rd Marine Division secured the road in its sector, reaching the airfield east of Agonia. During the day, motorized patrols mounted on jeeps, half tracks, and tanks moved in front of the infantry, advancing on the few roads running north, while the off road movement was extremely difficult because of dense vegetation. Hundreds of mines, emplaced on roads and likely infantry routes, slowed the advance more than the Japanese resistance. Engineers and the bomb disposal specialists worked hard to reduce those obstacles, and despite the mines by nightfall, the Marines of the 3rd Division reached their objective lines set for the day, again facing almost no opposition. Lack of Japanese resistance allowed the 9th Marines to be pulled back from the line, and for the first time since landing, the 3rd Marine Division had a proper reserve. On the right flank, on August 1st, the 77th Division captured an intact bridge over the Pango River, and by noon, they crossed the river unopposed. During the day, Marines and Army troops accomplished the day's main task by seizing the entire length of the Agonia Pango Road. This gain was crucial for the men of the 77th Division, as they were already low on supplies, especially water. For the rest of the battle, this overused, poorly maintained, and badly deteriorated road would be the main supply route from the beachheads to the forward positions of both divisions. After two days of unopposed, steady advance, on August 2, American forces reached the main Japanese defensive line. The 77th Division was to advance with the 305th and 307th Regiments abreast, with the 307th maintaining contact with the 3rd Marine Division. The division's task was to move into Beregarda village and proceed to the north toward Mount Beregarda. Before the infantry attack, at 6.30 a.m., a light tank company of the 77th Division moved forward to reconnoiter the area near the village of Beregarda, which consisted of fewer than 20 houses, which lay southwest of Mount Beregarda, and located at the road junction on the main route from Agonia inland, and north to Finnegarzen village, edged by irregular patches of the jungle, which extend into the open ground. As the armor moved into Beregarda, the Japanese opened up with a torrent of fire, from the nearby jungle. After a short combat, the tanks withdrew to report the Japanese location, before the main attack began. When the Japanese announced their presence, the infantry of the 307th and 305th regiments, accompanied by tanks, at 9.30 a.m., moved carefully over the open ground, until precise and heavy Japanese fire halted them some 300 meters in front of the village. The determined Japanese, fiercely resisted, pinning the 307th Regiment down as they reached the first houses, and equally stiff resistance halted the 305th Regiment on the right, when the assault companies tried to outflank the village. With the sunset, the men of the 77th Division, pulled back after losing 29 men killed, and 98 wounded. Many stayed awake, all night, as they all had heard of the Japanese Banzai charge on Saipan, which overran and decimated two battalions, and they expected such a during the night, fearing that the same could happen to them. On the left, the 3rd Marine Division, made much better progress, pushing further ahead than the 77th Division. To maintain contact between the two divisions, the 9th Marines, assumed a position on the right flank, to close the gap that had appeared between them. The night of August 2nd, passed relatively quiet, and the morning came without incident. On August 3rd, the 77th Division, tried to carry out, a better coordinated attack on the Beregarda than the day before, aiming to break the Japanese defenses, and capture Mount Beregarda. The attack began at 6.30 a.m., and by 9.30, both regiments advanced through the village, encountering only a few Japanese snipers. Soon, it became clear, that the Japanese abandoned positions, that had held 77th Division at a standstill the entire previous day, and withdrew north. By 3 p.m., the 3rd Battalion of the 307th Regiment, reached the summit of Mount Beregarda, 
and secured the hill, meeting only scattered resistance on the lower slope. The capture of Beregarda did not bring much relief to the men of the 77th Division, as the vegetation north of the village became so dense that the difficulties of operating in jungle terrain, in the following few days, caused more trouble to the soldiers than the Japanese opposition. The movement was slow, and units were often out of touch with each other, fighting separately, without support on their flanks, as it was hard to locate adjacent units. On the same day, at about 9.10 am, the Marines of the 3rd Marine Division, came across the Japanese defensive line, in front of Finnegarzen village. The situation and terrain, favored the Japanese with excellent fields of fire, which surprised the Americans. Soon, the Marines recovered from the initial shock, and supported by tanks, after vicious combat, they managed to take the village. The combat for Finnegarzen, was the last major battle for the 3rd Marine Division on Guam, and during this fighting, Private First Class Frank Wietek, from 1st Battalion of the 9th Marines, destroyed several Japanese positions with automatic rifle and grenades, while moving ahead of his own tanks. In this action, Private Wietek was mortally wounded, and posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. After heavy fights for Finnegarzen and Beregarda, the Japanese began falling back to their last stand, prepared on 265 meters high, Mount Santa Rosa. General Geiger, in the meantime, ordered the divisions to continue the vigorous pursuit, in order to prevent the retreating Japanese, from organizing a defense. Furthermore, as the island on the northern end, became wider, he relieved the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade from its mission guarding the southern part of the island, and ordered them to march northward, to assume the position on the left flank for the last push. The 3rd Division, would move through the center, deploying its units on a three-regiment front, which would turn to the east, to take in the whole northern end of the island, and support the 77th Division, which was to remain on the right flank. Throughout August 4, preparations for a new front line, and Shem of Maneuver were underway, as the Marine Brigade reached its northern assembly area. Besides the Marine Brigade, the 306th Regiment of the 77th Division, after spending the previous eight days patrolling in defense of the southern beachhead, arrived north, to reinforce the rest of the division, and assume positions to the left of the 307th Regiment. The Japanese, now faced an overwhelming number of attack forces. And there would be plenty of help from the sea and air, in a final drive north, to destroy the remaining Japanese on Mount Santa Rosa. However, by this point, the Americans had become trapped in the dense jungle, where visibility was down to only a few meters, and had fought wild skirmishes with the Japanese ambushes. In these conditions, both divisions, had made relatively limited progress. The following day, the advance continued despite heavy terrain, and Japanese infiltration through the gap-filled line. The day passed, in fighting off Japanese ambushes and small counter-attacks from the flanks and rear. With the battle's end in sight, the American troops became overconfident, considering the Japanese incapable of mounting a serious counter-attack. This false sense of security, caught the men of the 1st Battalion of the 305th Regiment off guard, when on the morning of August 6, they ran into Japanese troops, accompanied by two tanks. According to intelligence estimates, the Japanese still had 14 operational tanks available, and at about 2 a.m., the men of Company A, came under the attack of two Japanese tanks and supporting infantry. The tanks breached the battalion perimeter, leaving a trail of devastation behind, before retreating undamaged. This, sudden attack, caused 16 killed and 32 wounded men of the 1st Battalion, many inflicted by friendly fire, concentrated on the tanks moving behind their lines. For the rest of the day, the men of the 77th Division, encounter several more tanks as they advance, constantly harassed by mortars, and small isolated groups of defenders on the way, reaching the northern slopes of Mount Santa Rosa by evening. On the same day, August 6, the 3rd Marine Division, accelerated its advance by switching to move in columns, facing no resistance on the way. 
The full-scale attack on Mount Santa Rosa began at noon on August 7, after heavy artillery and naval shelling of Japanese positions. The tanks and infantry moved forward, overrunning machine gun positions, while in front of them, bulldozers blazed trails through the jungle, and by nightfall, the 77th Division, was within reach of the Mount Top, where they halted for the night. The attack resumed on August 8, with the 305th and 307th Regiments advancing rapidly, and by 12.40 p.m., the northern half of Mount Santa Rosa, was in American hands. The 306th Regiment, had also completed an enveloping move, to cut off the escaping route. By 2.40 p.m., the army had reached the mountain top, securing the rest of the mountain. Out of an estimated number of defenders, that ranged up to 5,000, only 600 Japanese bodies, were found after the two-day battle for Santa Rosa Mountain, and even worse, some Japanese tanks were also unaccounted for. This meant, that significant numbers of Japanese troops, were now spread across the jungle terrain, everywhere on Guam. Meanwhile, the 1st Marine Brigade, on the far west, found only negligible resistance as it advanced along pretty decent trails, and on August 8, a patrol of the 22nd Marines, reached Retidian Point, the island's northernmost point. With the Japanese last stand occupied, to avoid casualties caused by friendly fire, on August 8, General Geiger, reduced the amount of naval gunfire on northern Guam, and at the same time, Saipan-based planes, ceased their activities over the island. The next day, Marines began vigorously patrolling the occupied area on the north, and clearing caves below the cliffs at Retidian Point. In the 77th Division Zone, organized resistance had ceased, and this area was declared secured at 6 p.m. on August 9. On the same day, the 3rd Marine Division, encountered the last organized Japanese resistance near Patty Point, the island's northeast end, when during the night, the 3rd Marines, came under tank attack supported by mortar fire. In the morning, the Marines advanced, blocking this last pocket of resistance with estimated 2,000 Japanese troops, hidden in the thick jungle. To avoid unnecessary casualties so close to the end of the campaign, Geiger called up artillery support, to finish the job. The artillery fired a total of 2,280 shells on a small, confined area, destroying most of the Japanese. At 7.30 am, the Marines, supported by a platoon of Sherman tanks, moved in to take this last part of Guam. Sherman tanks, destroyed a few Japanese tanks, while seven more were found abandoned. General Geiger, was reluctant to declare Guam secure, until a last pocket of resistance and tanks, still existing in the 3rd Division zone, was wiped out, and at 11.31 am on August 10, as he learned that the last Japanese tanks still in action, had been destroyed, he declared Guam secure. The Battle of Guam, was the second most costly marine operation of the war so far, after the Battle of Saipan. In 21 days of combat, the total American casualties, were 1,783 men killed, and 6,010 wounded. Out of about 18,000 Japanese troops on the island, nearly 11,000 died, 1,250 surrendered, and others were listed as missing. However, many small groups of Japanese, had been bypassed, during advance using favorable terrain to hide. Mopping up, continued way after the battle, and small groups of Japanese continued to harass the Americans. For the first, two weeks after Guam was declared secured, up to 80 Japanese were killed or taken prisoner each day. Despite this, a large number of stragglers, remained on the island. In days after the battle, two Japanese officers, Lieutenant Colonel Takeda Hideyuki and Captain Sato, attempted to organize resistance groups, but demanding survival, in harsh terrain, left them ineffective. Nevertheless, harassment and small skirmishes in the jungle, continued years after the battle ended. On December 8, 1945, 
three U.S. Marines were ambushed and killed. The last stragglers surrendered years after the war ended. Sergeant Masashi Ito surrendered on May 23, 1960, after his companions were captured, while the last Japanese soldier on the island, Sergeant Shuichi Yokoi, after living alone in a cave for 28 years, was discovered on January 24, 1972.